How's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. So this is the Blackberry Classic and I've been using this for about a month, maybe more than that now. I've been reviewing Android phones so I wanted to try something a bit different and I've, I have the Blackberry Passport as my main driver and I'm also deciding on getting the Silver Edition just to review it again because I want to do the reviews like this and I didn't do it like this. Hope you guys don't mind the camera, it doesn't have a lot of dynamic range as you can see. It looks more like that when it's properly exposed, but I can't really control it because it's on auto. Anyways, so let's get into the video. So if you want to buy this, links will be in the description. So go ahead and check that out. And also timestamps will be in the description so you can jump to a certain part of the video that you want to watch. So like gaming. Now this phone is basically the Blackberry Q10. So it's got the Snapdragon S4 Plus dual core processor clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. It's got 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of storage and an 8 megapixel uh, rear facing camera as well as a 2 megapixel front facing camera. So it's basically uh, the Blackberry Q10 except it has a bit of different things. So since it's a bit bigger, it's got a bigger battery. So it's f instead of 2100 milliamps, it's 2515 milliamps. So uh, it's a bit bigger and also um, it has USB OTG at the bottom over here. The screen is uh, the same except it's not AMOLED. This is uh, IPS display. Uh, it's uh, it's 3.5 inches and it's still got a um, resolution of 720 by 720. So Blackberry made this device because it was requested by uh, the fans or the users. With the, with the Q10 along, uh, you know, you, they wanted to see how the trackpad would fare in a Blackberry 10. And uh, I'm actually going to talk about the trackpad uh, in a separate section. Just check out the description if you want to jump to that bit. Uh, but let's go ahead and first start off by taking a look around the device. I'll move it a bit closer so I, um, you get a bit, a, bit of, a bit of a better view. It's a bit overexposed as you can see but um, there's your keyboard. You got your tool belt, you got your 3.5 inch 720 in display. Square again obviously. It's a bit bigger than the Q10 but it's not a huge difference really. The, uh, the main difference is that this is IPS instead of uh, AMOLED and I've used the Q10 for a very long time. And that's got some burn ins now, so it's the colors are just messed up a bit. Um, but this one um, is is actually better. I actually like this one more than the Q10's display. Now on the top you got a two megapixel front facing camera, as well as all your light sensors and everything. Um, on the top you've got your power button with two noise cancelling microphones and a headphone jack. On the uh, right side you've got the volume down, volume up, and then the uh, convenience key. On the bottom you've got a mono microphone, a mono speaker, obviously microphone mono, um, and a USB for charging and also OTG. And then on the uh, left side uh, you've got the trays for uh, SIM and the SD card. Um, so that's a bit different because it doesn't have a removable back in, uh, unlike the Q10 so you, you can't really uh, change the battery or anything. Uh, so they just made this other side so you can access your SIM and your memory card slot over there. Uh, at the back you got an 8 megapixel rear facing camera along with a flash and it does say classic over here. Um, it, it does look quite nice. And you got the Blackberry logo. Um, now at the back over here it's actually got a really nice design. I don't know if you can see this but yeah of course you can see this. It's got this exposure right. Um, I'll talk about the design in a bit but that's basically the look around. Uh, it, it actually looks quite nice. So moving uh, moving from the Q10 to this is a huge upgrade because it, because it has OTG and you can just plug in flash drives and everything and it actually works really well with those. I've been using that and on the Q10 you couldn't do that so definitely upgrade over here. If you have some files on a flash drive you want to switch between your PC or your phone uh, you can actually do this. Just hook it up and it'll just pop up. And I believe it's also going to work with the uh, ducks. So if you have a dragonfly or something, uh, you hook this up and it should work. All right, let's talk about the design. So I personally really like the design. You know what? I'm actually going to change the camera settings. Uh, so it's going to be a bit darker. Okay, so let's talk about this design. Hopefully you can see this a bit better now. Now the design is uh, amazing. I love the design. It's, uh, it looks quite nice. I mean... Look at this, uh, it's a really nice looking device, it's quite simple, it's got a lot of curves on it and the build quality is, as well, it's better than the Blackberry Passport's build quality, that's one thing. Um, it actually looks quite nice, uh, I don't know what to say about it because um, at first I thought, well, it's got too many bezels and stuff, but it's actually just fallen in and everything is 
it's actually a really really nice design i mean i, I think this is better than the blackberry passports but don't quote me on that i don't really care um, at the back over here as you can see i showed you just a bit ago that it's got a bit of a texture and i think the blackberry passport silver edition has this texture as well uh, you can probably see the better there and it makes a sound if you just rub on it so yeah looks nice um some people hate this black bar that it says over here classic uh you can't see that now i guess there you go classic um same out of focus but um i actually like it it looks quite nice it looks sleek um there are some quirks to this phone that every other phone doesn't have without running blackberry 10 and i'll go through those when i'm talking about the tool belt because you're mainly looking at this phone if you because of the tool belt otherwise just at the at any other blackberry 10 phone it, it's a really heavy phone in terms of build quality and i wanted to kind of show you that by taking out these sim trays and the memory card slot but uh, i well, i can't do that because i don't have the thingy with me right now um, but what i find is these trays are the build quality on these is like you're paying 500 just for this tray inside that's how good this phone is built it's heavier than the passport so that's so that's kind of got me a bit because it, it, i think it's made out of steel i don't know but it's really heavy for a phone right um but what i don't get is that why other companies don't do this this build quality is beyond amazing it's better than the blackberry passport i'm talking about the original passport not the silver edition um it's heavier but i, I don't know uh, i mean especially these sim trays because every android phone that i've used they have poopy uh, sim trays you know uh especially the xperia phones i think because they're made out of plastic if you break them then you're long gone there's no way of getting them back these are made out of metal and they're really really thick the trays um and it's just everything is like so sturdy this is this is more like a tool instead of a, a, a just a phone phone or something so let's talk about comfortability um, it's a very very comfortable phone to hold unfortunately i can't use it with one hand properly because i have to like have my fingers clamped around there around it and then just to reach out for the other side i find this phone a bit wide but i guess a lot of people just can use it with one hand i mean i can't definitely unlike the passport which I've, i have no chance of using with one hand this one is a lot more comfortable to hold because of this design uh, as you can see it is so much more nicer to hold and um, it's really easy to use with one hand okay let's talk about the display i might just turn up the brightness over here so it comes out a bit better on the uh, so i don't know how that's coming out on video but the display is like really sharp because it's ips instead of super amoled now because it's bigger than the blackberry q10 display it is less sharp but if you look at it really really closely you'll be able to see the pixels on it uh, but i don't have a problem using this display uh you know out and about uh, obviously it's not in focus i don't know if i can actually get that into focus or maybe just to the focus that close because focusing was good on this camera the display is actually really good especially the colors if you go into settings i'll uh, have this in focus hopefully and if you go down to display now you can actually change the color settings okay so you can make it look different and stuff and the colors on this display are just amazing uh, obviously it's not going to come out uh, good on the video but if, if you can see this uh, good look <laughs> hopefully you can actually see this really well but <clears throat> the colors is super super vibrant it's like an amoled display the only thing is since it's ips it's not gonna get the burn in issue and stuff now brightness wise uh, outdoor visibility is okay it's not like the passport um it is okay i mean i haven't had a problem with it but when you're out and about you might have some trouble looking at it just a little bit but you can actually see it in outside so it's fine um for a display uh, since it's small uh moving from the passport to this it was a bit like, like whoa this is too small but i've gotten a bit used to it and for how you're going to use this phone you know since the way that you're going to use it it's actually sharp okay so if you look at it you're not going to see any pixels it's going to be like 4k or something it's really really sharp all right I'm, now i'm going to talk about typing and this might come out as a funny surprise to you guys but i can actually type faster on this than the blackberry passport and i, I don't know what it is i think it's this keyboard like uh, it, it's uh, just like the q10 but it's a bit bigger i don't know how much bigger it exactly is but 
is a bit bigger than the Q10. And if you remember the 9900, when you're moving from that to the Q10, the Q10's keyboard is bigger than the 9900's. But this is a bit bigger than that, but it's a bit smaller than the Passport. Now, I've grown so used to it that I can just about type without having to look at the keyboard. And most of the time, that's like 90%. Um, I actually get everything right. Everything. Um, and this, this tool belt uh, it actually is a huge help. I'm actually going to jump into a word document, but I'll have to close this one up. Okay, so this trackpad is basically the only reason that uh, makes this different from all the other BlackBerry 10 phones. Um, so what I'm going to do is, it's just going a bit too dark now, isn't it? Messing about with me. Um, i try to get this in view, but obviously I probably won't be able to. Uh, I'll just type like this, hopefully you can see this. So typing on it is... Uh, Um, I, I don't know what to say about it because uh, obviously since it's not touch typing you can't really swipe up and down but what I find is the trackpad is a lot easier to use and much better than the BlackBerry Passport and, uh, and in the future I will make a video comparing the Passport to the Classic because, but right now I don't have another camera to use that I'm using the BlackBerry Passport to record this so uh, oh, obviously I'll make another video but if you hold shift and just select uh, my fingers are a bit sweaty right now, um, but I wanted to kind of write a paragraph or something. So let's just say uh, I'm writing a letter. So this is not how you write a letter normally. I can actually zoom out a bit, I think. So now it's gone tiny. You can probably read. I'll zoom in later on. So when you zoom out, you can actually fit more into... Uh, <clears throat> Oops. Wrong button. So you can actually type, <laughs> whoa, he's typing his own thing. So this, I normally write reviews and everything on the phone, so. Uh, oops, should be a different. I, lo I write a lot of things, especially, oh wait, I haven't done paragraphs. Uh, what you'll find is the instead of using the touchpad, um, on the on uh, on the BlackBerry Passport, which is actually not as accurate and stuff like that as the trackpad. Now, when I came to back to the trackpad, at first it was a bit weird uh, to get back to it, but now that I'm using it, it's so much better than the BlackBerry Passport's keyboard. Um, I, I miss actually nothing about the keyboard on the BlackBerry Passport, and in fact, it's a bit unnatural because you're having to switch between the touch screen and the physical keyboard again and again with this you got everything here back like you know back in the days it's completely classic uh, i can actually type numbers a bit faster than this um i go ahead and select all that and i just get rid of it see um look with the trackpad you can actually just i'll just zoom in a bit so you can probably see this but obviously it's, it's not a passport screen so you will have to um see less text and all if you want to see big but Look at this, uh, with the trackpad, what I find with the BlackBerry uh, Passport keyboard is if you double tap it, the cursor comes up, but there is no cursor right now because you don't need a cursor, you got the trackpad and it does everything. Um, to go above in a line, you have to like reach from the bottom to the top of the keyboard and it only does one line. So you have to do this again and again and, and it's going to go up slowly, slowly like this, right? <clears throat> because it doesn't get it all the time now with this since it's exactly a bit it's got acceleration on so if you do it faster it's gonna do it faster and if you do it slowly it's gonna do it slowly now that is a bit of a pain in the backside um but i'm actually kind of used to it especially in web browsing as well um i don't know i'll have to look for a page to jump on to my wi-fi is slow right now but look at this um so i'm viewing a desktop website hopefully that's coming out right just checking now, why am I looking at a desktop website? Well, watch this. I have got a cursor on this. And this cursor makes a world's difference. And I am not even joking. I have never had an experience like this on a phone. This is the closest experience to a desktop that I've had, even more than the passport. I think 
now that I have this, the, the passport keyboard and the way they use it, the way they've implemented it all, it's completely disastrous. Like, I cannot even stress that enough. The thing is, with the passport keyboard, it's mainly just used for scrolling around, but you can do that with the search screen. Look at that. I mean, of course, it's a dual core processor, it's not going to be smooth and everything. Uh, but watch this. Um, if I want to scroll up and down, I can do it slowly or I can do it really, really fast. Um, <clears throat> It's just that the thing I don't like about the trackpad is it actually has acceleration and at times it's not it's not always accurate. Like if you scrolling down like this, all of a sudden it's gonna kind of do a big jump at times because it actually detects that you're doing it too fast. So it does make a big difference. Um, but I've actually gotten used to it. But look at this. I mean, I can just get all these tiny buttons with a touch. Look at that. So press that. And it's a basically a desktop experience. I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. Uh, why didn't they do this with the um, BlackBerry Passport? It's amazing with, with this uh, cursor. Yeah, I can actually watch uh, add these uh, to the watch layer list. Of course, it's a bit slow. I'll get onto the performance uh, in a bit. But if I hover over this, uh, it, it should bring up the thingy. But it's not doing it right now because it's just messing about with me. I can obviously press all the buttons and stuff. And there is so there's the button. Uh, you can't do this on any other phone unless you get a third party browser or something like that. Uh, in which case, I don't know what is the I don't know what to say honestly. Uh, then again, you're using the touchscreen. This is the trackpad. Now uh, the trackpad is um, amazing. Uh, there are a bit of gripes I do don't like about it. Like it doesn't feel like it's top notch. I mean, just listen to the click of it. Oh, okay, you can't hear that, but it feels like uh, a Chinese button. But everything else is actually quite good. The keyboard uh, is a bit more tactile than the BlackBerry Passport's keyboard. Um, it's a bit more sturdy because of what I find with the Q, uh, Q key on the Passport is that it's gone mushy because I think I pressed it too much or maybe it's right at the side end, end of the edge of the keyboard. Uh, but this is all really really tactile uh, it's just a bit more tactile than the blackberry passports and what i also realize is that the backlight is actually a bit blue just, just a tiny bit blue so i don't know if i can just show that or something i'll have to turn the lights off right now so hopefully you can see this or oh, you probably can't uh, it, it's not a deal breaker it's nothing but but it's just a tiny bit bluer than the rest of the keys and also comparing this to the passport it's just a tiny bit blue and uh, I don't know if you can see this it's a bit uneven um, it just goes off a bit on the edges and it's a bit more brighter in the middle uh, but that's about it I haven't had any problems with it honestly uh, if I turn it back on um, I think th this is a, a, a really great keyboard I actually like this more than the passport take it from me I'm not joking. So you can do the similar, uh, you can do similar things uh, like what you can do on the passport, except it's a touch a trackpad instead of a touch uh, thingy. Uh, but what you can't do is swipe back to delete and swipe up to uh, select a word from here on the thingy. Um, but when it comes to selecting text, it's a lot easier to go up and down because it just kind of does it better, I think. Um, and with the pop-up keyboards. Uh, I mean letters, I mean words and correction and everything uh, You'll have to type the top, but other than that, uh, that's the only difference compared to the passports and also, you know um, The symbols and everything are on here, so you don't have to swipe down and get access them on the on the um, okay, Screen, but you can also do that with this. So here's the other ones um, Obviously it jumps across to these ones first because the other ones are down here So this is the full keyboard. So you go all the other symbols that are hidden and then all the symbols here with the, on the other page from here and you got all the letters up as well so if you jump into that here's all the thingies here whatever um it's just better than the passport because you don't have to swipe down and about um it's all just in front of you so the same now let's talk about the camera now to be honest with you um device memory low that's a bit funny Oh, um, the RAM is actually filled up. I didn't, uh, this is, I've never experienced this before. That is a bit funny. Alright, the camera app is just a bit bugged off right now. I don't know what it is. Um, 
it's never actually happened to me before i know it has enough memory just to open up up um, and there's nothing actually running in the background and stuff um, other than whatsapp and stuff but they don't take up a lot of space uh, but i'm just going to jump into pictures over here and i'll show you the pictures i took with this so i've been taking a few pictures and i don't i don't know if i'm gonna have to show you up close i know i'm normally going to put it into the video um, uh, video editing software and just show you up front but uh, i like to show it on the screen so i'm just gonna kind of show you up close i turn the lights off so you can see it better all right it turns out it's better just with the lights on um so i took a few pictures and i've actually been using the camera and detail wise in good lighting is good it's very very good but when it gets to uh, and this is the flash on, on the crap laptop i have um it's really narrow it's not all that great uh but what i have is a low light image so look at this um you probably can't see it but you can't actually see anything in the image anyways just then other than that part um it's not in focus what i find is that you know that it was it was this shot just in focus instead of being out of focus and but it's not in focus and then obviously you have this other shot which uh consists of my uh, portable setup of the music and if you have the flash on as you can see you can capture a lot of detail in it um you can see that uh, it's actually better on the yeah, in the actual image but what i find is um here's a timetable so i use the flash and it's kind of just done a thingy uh, spotlight kind of effect but in the middle it's really good you can read everything other than the reflection of it but if you move to the side um it's gone a bit softer uh, all right and then if you move to the corners of the image as you can see you actually can't read that time over there i don't know if you can even see that but you can't read that i'll actually actually turn the just light so it's going to be a noisy image so as you can see all the times are just it, it just gets a bit softer and everything now what i find good about this camera is that it captures more detail than the blackberry passport so this is the blackberry passport's camera of the same picture and it has a bit of a, a wider flash so it kind of covers a bit more uh, but what i find is the the detail in the passport even though it's 13 megapixels um, it is much better than the um, 8 megapixel on the blackberry classic but the difference is uh, it actually uses the optical image stabilization to just stabilize the image so this was handheld obviously and uh, look look at this the corner of the image is actually really really sharp and also the middle is actually sharp um, but the blackberry passport doesn't capture details that make it a 30 megapixel camera it actually captures um, detail for that makes it up as a 8 megapixel camera and that's because it just mushes out things a bit because the optical st image stabilization and in return you get a much better image across the whole image so corners are really really sharp and then the um, middle is really really sharp as well now the camera isn't really great at low light but it's okay in the daytime uh, it's a bit slow it's just your typical blackberry camera it's not really good at all um, but what i find is um also uh it's a funny but the blackberry cameras on blackberry phones actually are more closer to dslr so if you just zoom in over here um now there is a lot of detail in there now that looks like a dslr image now the way i find um samsung phones to shoot is that they over process they look over sharpened and it's really contrasty and they just bleached out a bit there's too much color and i mean as in dynamic range isn't really great but with this it's a lot closer to dslr it actually everything is like natural instead of over processed so that's one thing that's good i have had a lot of problems with the camera um so for a phone's camera is is okay i'm not gonna complain about it uh, because you, this is what you expect from a phone it's not great but it's okay okay let's talk about social media which everybody wants to know on the classic now since it's running blackberry 10 it's a bit of a problem getting apps but there's a workaround and that's called um, the play store I've, I've just loaded that in because the snap actually doesn't work anymore i don't know why i have that but let's talk about social media now i used facebook twitter and i always use whatsapp and bbm these two are not used and i got this app which is called all in one social media app thing jig and basically it's an app that allows you to go on your social media 
um, platforms through the web browser uh, so let's just say you go on to go to Twitter and this is an Android app um, now the reason I actually did this is so as you can see my Twitter is here now um, I can actually use this trackpad uh, in uh, apps to scroll up and down um, or I could use the touch screen now I don't know about pictures but it definitely does show the pictures um, so there's a picture um, over there uh, but what I find is that it's um, with the Twitter app on the BlackBerry 10 uh, I don't know if it's fixed now or something it's just probably gonna annoy me because it's connected I mean um, uh, I'm making a video so I might do something different but I can't see the pictures oh wait there we go so now it's loading them in uh, the Twitter app works but at first it didn't ro uh, load the picture then but now I have it just does that now facebook um is uh well i don't use it anymore because it does that um so all in all if you want to use this uh for social media instagram doesn't work unless you get that and that goes to the desktop i mean the website so instagram actually doesn't work unless you get a patched version there are uh, um, other clients like insta10 or something but for social media i'm actually gonna have to say no okay because it, it it doesn't work unless you try to find a way around it which for me is easy i just go on that i can get everything on that um everything's here uh, the, everything that i use more than everything um is all over here so for me it's not a problem there's instagram for you um and all these work but the thing is they're on the web browser now if you don't want to use the web browser that's your problem go ahead deal with it so uh, i don't have a problem with it it's your problem okay if you're willing to find a workaround then is you're going to be much more happier stop being lazy whatsapp actually does work the only thing it doesn't let you do is send videos and photos but call quality and everything is really really good everything works just the way you want it it's just that uh, some apps you might not be able to find um, anymore so like the instagram app on android it actually doesn't work anymore on here and also it doesn't work on the passport it just uh, you turn it on and it just freezes that's about it so let's go ahead and jump on to videos and i'm actually gonna do a video playback this is gonna show you how good i is at performing uh, performance wise so this is 480p uh, oh wait um all of these videos it doesn't support so what i did was hold that down you can open it in mx player which is the android app and everything works over there Put the volume up, obviously. Now 4AP uh, does definitely work, so that's fine. Now 1080p 30fps is just a bit slightly a bit of a different story. So watch this. I'm using the software to decode because the hardware doesn't do proper decoding or of, of anything. So um, there's a bit of a delay in the audio and then all of a sudden it just stops and then it catches up with the video. I mean, the video catches up with the audio or vice versa. It does both of them and it starts messing about. And if, I, I don't know if it does hardware decoding. Look at that. Um, so none of the files that I have actually do hardware decoding. Um, now 1080p30 is no good. But if you record the video on from a camera or if you have a different format, then it will play all of them just fine just up to 1080p 60 i guess uh, other than uh, above that you can't really do much it's not gonna work so i'm a bit disappointed but uh, in terms of video playback and it has to do with the processor so what i'm gonna do is show you something else um, that the blackberry passport can't do and that is if you hold the shift 
you can select it all. Ooh, now that's gonna kill every phone out there. Um, this menu more just delete, or you can just press the delete, delete key. That's one thing that BlackBerry Passport is definitely missing. Shift and you just scroll around and just start selecting everything is amazing. But video playback is not great, but the speaker is actually quite good. And also, what I find is if you go into the YouTube app, and this is obviously patched and side loaded and stuff, um, the YouTube app is not up to performance anymore, and it's not the phone. It happens on the BlackBerry Passport as well, so definitely something in the runtime or just something weird. Uh, so I just go on this uh, somehow. I don't know. Now we're gonna jump onto NCS, and I'll actually put this song on uh, because the speaker is actually quite good. But what you find is um, the YouTube app, okay, the app is it doesn't work fluidly. All right, now it's doing it, but I don't know. Um, so so when you're beginning a video, so my actually it starts is jumpy, very very jumpy, and then when it loads in the video and everything, actually it gets a bit smoother and stuff. Um, I have to do this. Oh wait, it's doing it now. Now what I recommend is going to the web browser and watching videos because uh, and use the mobile website for YouTube. Uh, that works a lot better than this one because it's a lot more fluid and it loads in videos and everything. But what I find is YouTube is starting to become one of those companies run by teenagers and they go on all mental over it because if you minimize the web browser, it actually stops the video and it just reloads the whole thing again and it just puts you back onto the position where you stop. So you have to click play and then it's gonna load the whole video in and then you can at least start playing the video again. So if you minimize it and you do something else, you can't do that anymore. Um, and it's not the phone or anything. It's just YouTube. They just changed it just to counter um, into, uh, counter the YouTube Red thing. So we all know that if you just minimize it in BlackBerry 10, it is gonna start. It's gonna continually play, and you can do whatever you want while listening to the video or a podcast in the background. But on YouTube, they've actually changed that, and it just doesn't work anymore. But you can make it work by going to the web, uh, the desktop app, and then running YouTube videos on there. That works fine. I don't know if you can hear the speaker, but it's a mono speaker. But what I find is the speaker is actually uh, really, really good. It's it's a bit warm. It's really filled in and everything. It, it's definitely high end speaker, but it's mono and it's not as loud as the Passport. So I definitely the Passport is still better. But for the speaker, I'm actually really, really impressed. Uh, much better than all the Galaxies that I've heard. Mind you, I haven't really heard all of them. Um, so yeah, definitely that speaker is actually quite good. Um, so yeah. Listening to music and everything, the digital to analog converter is okay, it's a bit warm. So the digital to analog converter inside this phone is a bit warm, it, has, it doesn't have the best sound stage, it's not clean or anything, it's your typical phone um, audio, but it actually sounds quite enjoyable, it's filled in, it's a bit soft, it's a bit smooth and everything, a bit like the Mojo, but it's definitely nothing like the Mojo. Um, so it kind of... Uh, it does a good job at making the music really fun and enjoyable to listen to, but it's not um, gonna drive really hard to high uh, high end headphones. So 250 ohms, it couldn't drive them and stuff like that. So don't do that. Um, but it's fine. It's actually quite it's quite nice. 
Now I'm going to turn the Wi-Fi off and that's because it has, I'm going to go and do some gaming and it does lose in some advertisements and those are very annoying. Uh, now we're going to do a bit for gaming but what I want you to look at is the performance. Now you can definitely play games on here. Um, I'll actually get a BlackBerry Z30 and do a gaming video to see how much games and everything you can play on BlackBerry 10. But the performance of this phone is kind of... I know a lot of people are going to say that um, it's not the passport. You don't expect it to be the passport and stuff. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind. But it, it's it's a bit bugging me off now but because... Um, now look at this, it's, it's doing good right now, obviously. I'll just move it a bit down. Um, this isn't meant to be for gaming. Don't get this for gaming. Uh, like this is not even an option that you should consider for gaming. So what I'm going to do is take a seat and play this game. Hopefully that's in focus. And I just want to, uh, I've actually been playing this game. Look, everything is on level uh, 11 and then 12 and then 10 over there. That's fully upgraded. Um, so definitely I've been playing this game a lot on this phone. Um, but you find that there are a lot of hiccups and jumps in the Android uh, performance. Um, um, it just um, it isn't really great, and I've also find this the uh, option. Uh, I mean, there's the same uh, performance jumps and everything. Um, it it does get definitely a lot worse than what it is showing right now. Um, Hopefully I just don't die. So there are little games that you can play here and there, something like this. Now if you talk about 3D games, uh, you can definitely play them, especially on the BlackBerry <laughs> Passport. Uh, you can definitely play games on any BlackBerry 10 phone. Um, but these phones with the dual core processor, the Z10, the Q10 and uh, stuff, they're probably not going to be the best. Uh, you can see that even this game is a bit jumpy. Um, it's playable because definitely I've been playing it, but um, uh, the funny thing is that what I want to say is that the performance is the same on BlackBerry 10 apps. Um, well, no other apps, just gaming apps. Uh, so I've got this other game, which is Road Rush Racing, which is a kind of like an alternative to the Hill Climb Racing app uh, on the Android. We gotta do definitely do something. Yeah, so some of with it, um, it's probably gone now. So yeah, whatever. Oh, look at this. <coughs> Didn't expect that to happen. Oh wait, it's not. Just wait for it. It's gonna respawn. There you go. Um, now I don't know how to explain this because running uh, uh, uh the BlackBerry Passport has a different emulator or some. Uh, running a uh, runtime I mean I mean not the runtime the emulator or it just has more raw power that it can actually um, do a better emulation of Android apps but with this it's a just a slight bit of a different story okay it's not gonna run all your Android apps 10 FP I mean uh, 60 FPS throughout the whole app um, and look at this Ooh, there you go. we're jumping and it just died to drop down in FPS uh, I think it's the the RAM is a bit slow, I think that's why it is. It just loads in stuff and then loads the out bit, uh, and that's where it just makes the jumps. So, um, obviously, it's playable, it's been much worse than this uh, at times. Um, but the funny thing is, th this performance uh, kind of carries on to uh, actually the BlackBerry 10 experience as well. Um, the other games I've been playing on the BlackBerry 10 side, they've actually uh, experienced the same thing. Uh, so performance wise is um, what's this so look how long it's gonna take to just go back to the uh, the stages and then the vehicles so it's a bit slow but it's definitely uh, not bad uh, considering what this device is used for and what it's meant to be used for it's actually quite good so what I mean is uh, you do emailing and stuff um, that's fine um, it runs just fine um, but when it comes to gaming and some intensive things like uh, watching videos well it doesn't happen when watching videos but when it comes to running apps pretty much all the apps that i've used the uh, android it actually starts to mess about a bit and that's because the processor is only dual core and stuff i know a lot of people say that the blackberry passport is 
comparing to the BlackBerry Passport is just uh, a bit slow but generally as a phone is quite fast and yes it is a fast phone but that's if you you doing uh, emailing and whatever it's meant to be used for it's a fast phone just for that but for everything else it is not really fast it actually has a lot of hiccups and stuff so it's for gaming definitely not an option but for emailing and stuff it's okay or right, i think this video has been long enough um I'll actually end it by talking about the battery life. So I'm impressed with the battery life though. That's one thing I'm really, really, really impressed by. And that's not because the battery life is either long or short. It's on 30% now, started with 41%. But I've been using it, uh, uh, you know, YouTube videos and stuff like that and had the screen on all the time. The thing I love about the battery inside this phone is that it's very consistent. Now, I've, out of all the other devices I've used, it's never been like this. Now what I mean by that is um, no matter what you're doing it's gonna still be the same decrease rate so it's just gonna it's not gonna change the de uh, how fast it decreases and stuff um, it's always kind of similar or the same so that uh, that depends on whatever you're doing so whether you're web browsing, playing games, watching videos, just emailing and stuff like that it's all very consistent. It's not gonna drain faster or slower or anything. Now that is impressive. And I don't know how to even explain it really, but no matter what you're doing, you don't have to worry about the battery life. The battery life gets me through one day with a an extra charge left, about 40%. Normally what I'm doing is sitting around doing nothing else. But the battery life is very, very impressive. Uh, compared to the passport, it is a lot more con um, stronger so that it doesn't change depending on the temperature or what you're doing it's always really 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 consistent but it's not as big as the passport so it doesn't last like two days or something um every day at the end of the day you're gonna have to charge it uh obviously that's uh, along with every other phone but what i find is, what the thing is with this is that you don't necessarily have to charge it at the end of the day you can charge it the next morning or something because it does have a charge left at the end um what i don't like about the party is it takes about two and a half hours to charge so uh <clears throat> yeah when it's on low charge it actually charges up quite fast but when it's on like 90 or 80 or something it actually slows down the charging so it does my heading a bit but it's okay I obviously you just leave it on charge at the end of the day when i come home and stuff and then just go to sleep or somewhere wake up and it's on 100 you start from 100 and um, it'll get you through a day with a decent charge left so i'm definitely impressed with the battery of course since it's a blackberry 10 phone uh, you do expect it to have a good battery and i mean it's a blackberry phone so yeah so what am i gonna do now is uh go back to the passport because personally to me that's more of my device i do watch videos here and there play some games just to spend some just to kill off some time but here's the funny thing i'm actually gonna keep this phone normally i don't do this but i'm actually gonna keep it on the side and i'm gonna use this for typing for messaging emailing and stuff and the blackberry passport is actually gonna be do something i watch videos on and just kind of chill out for a moment uh, so if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I'll definitely answer your questions. I mean questions it is uh, Coming up to 2018 and I actually recommend this device just for web browsing, emailing, taking pictures, watching videos here and there Maybe not on the Android side. If you want to have a BlackBerry 10 experience, this is it But don't get into Android. That's not a strong point of this phone but other than that, it is definitely a really, really good phone. Um, it has actually taken me a bit. Uh, I don't want to sell it. Even though I have the passport, I don't need it or anything. But it just has that feeling that I don't want to sell it. It's this trackpad, isn't it? I know it is. Uh, obviously, the trackpad is a more uh, optimized. So you can definitely use it on areas where the touch, part on the, the touch keyboard on the BlackBerry Passport, you will be able to use. You can definitely use the trackpad in more areas. So, um, yeah, if you can get used to this, you're definitely going to love it. But don't get Android apps. I mean, there are some Android apps that do work really well, just not games. So, theory test, that's fine. I actually got this game just to show you that you can actually game on it. But I didn't go through them because I can't be anymore. Um, so, 
I'll leave it here once again. Thank you for watching and I will see you again in another video.